Uh, right, hello everybody. Welcome to today's podcast. It's the 14th of September 2020 and we're going to be looking at the trading week ahead. So my name is Adrian Boothy. I'm the head of trading here at TrendSignal, uh, the UK educator. Uh, it's helping people to trade uh, more successfully, trading FX indices and commodities. And as a prudent trader, you need to be aware of what the major events are for the week ahead. And that's what we're going to be doing today. So I'm joined as ever with our chief analyst, Jerry Miller. Hello, Jerry. Yeah, hi there all. Um, and what we're going to be doing is just sort of dissecting the main events uh, really that are coming up because it is these events that create movement and movement creates opportunity. So you need to be about aware about what's going to be creating movement on the dollar, uh, the pound, the euro, the indices, the commodities. And that's what this um, podcast is really all about. So, Jerry, why don't you kick us off with what are the main events that we've got coming up for the week ahead? Uh, OK, yeah. Um busy week actually for central banks and the reason why we focus on such events uh, the central banks they have what, what are called uh, monthly policy meetings um, ironically they're not every month so uh, but they're best described that way but they, they meet to discuss monetary policy and their announcements will have a big effect on their, the currency involved uh, and also stock markets and bond markets so it's it has a, a significant effect and it's for that reason alone that um, the market follows them and that's the reason why we follow them quite closely so for example this week we've got the federal reserve uh, which is the united states central bank we've got the bank of england here in the uk and the bank of japan so um three big central bank heavyweights uh, really so uh, you, we'll, we'll be looking at those um uh, when they come up this week um yeah so should we kick off with monday uh adrian yeah yeah let's do that Always a good, always a good day to start the week. Um, mm. Not a lot happening actually. Uh, this is Monday today. To, uh, we we know that the Liberal Democratic uh, Party in Japan has voted for um, Shinzo Abe's successor. Uh, Shinzo Abe, who'd actually been in power for a long, long time, uh, about eight years or so, uh, and resigned suddenly. Uh, gosh, about a couple of weeks ago now, uh, citing ill health for his decision and. Um, as his replacement, I think, was a deputy a chap called Suga, or I think that's where it's pronounced. He's pronounced, but um, and I think the idea is that the, the policy uh, will not change much, certainly in the in the short term, anyway. Um, so there's been no effect on the markets whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. The first sort of um, one of uh, no nearer home, as it were, is in the UK tomorrow morning, which is the claimant count. Uh, so this is the um, number of new claims for uh, unemployment benefit uh, and it's just important that we do follow these because it does affect central bank thinking uh, obviously if an economy is not doing so well uh, you'll you will see a, a pickup in uh, unemployment claims so that's something that that's the reason why we follow that quite closely and it will have an effect on sterling and have effect on the FTSE have effect on our you know gilts the um, the UK sovereign bond so we will be following that and the, the unwinding of the furlough scheme, Adrian, that, that really ends, I think the furlough scheme ends at the end of October, mm. um, but it's likely that uh, companies are looking at their, their headcount just thinking, do we just keep them on to get money from the government or do we make people redundant now? And there are companies who are already making those uh, moves, as you know, and we discussed before, uh, they have to go through a particular process if you're going to make yeah. more than, I think, is it 10 people redundant? Um, there's various hurdles uh, depending on the number of people uh, that you're going to make redundant yeah so if there's more than i think 20 or 100 it's got to be up to 45 days consultation period right there. yeah so I, I think there's a lot of that happening now which uh, is of a concern to the government and uh, and, and businesses of course um yeah of course so, the thing is about this data if you're going to be trading the pound for example i know it's quite early but you might want to just pause your first trade of the day perhaps until just after seven o'clock because it creates a little bit of uncertainty you get the data come in and then the markets will then react and they'll react which create that reaction is the thing that creates the movement so it's a bit of a gamble ahead of that because you're basically guessing about whether the claimant count is going to be higher or lower than expected after that is where the movement comes in and that's where the opportunity comes in basically uh, and, and the good news is with uh, if there is any good news about the covid 19 pandemic is that all the these these uk the uk data is all released at seven o'clock in the morning now um 
or largely re release at seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, but obviously, the central bank uh, announcements happen when the central bank decides uh, to release them. But uh, yeah, so so seven o'clock. Uh, once you've got that out of the way, we now know what the number is by that time. After that time, and it makes it a lot easier then to avoid any of those banana skins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Historically, it was sort of nine thirty mostly, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. Very often. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so okay. um, Wednesday. Uh, CPI, we know uh, what that stands for, Consumer Price Index, inflation to you and me, uh, an important number normally. Uh, as you can see, Adrian, we're expecting plus 0.1%. So uh, that's nothing much to write home about. And it's not good for businesses um, having uh, very low inflation. There are concerns amongst uh, central bankers globally about deflation. Um, the, the inability of, for prices to rise, and that's one of the reasons, Adrian, apropos our discussion in the previous podcast, why central banks um, and governments are happy to see their currencies depreciate. In past years, you might be worried about importing inflation. Well, guess what? There is no inflation. And inflation, yeah. you do need a bit of inflation, Adrian. Otherwise, you can't put your prices up. And if you know that you can't put your prices up in the year because of a lack of inflation, i.e., others will compete against you and you'll lose market share, then you can't invest in your business. If you can't invest in your business, it's not going to grow. And that's not what an economy wants. Uh, and you can see what's happened um, in the likes of Japan over the last sort of 20 years. So it, yeah. it, it's a big problem. So no inflation, uh, even, uh, you know, with the, a rebound in ster sorry, a fall off on, in sterling over the last uh, week and a half, um, that's not going to have much effect really, because really, you know, sterling had been, uh, rallying, hadn't it, from the lows in um, mid-March when we hit sort of 115 against the dollar. Mm. So unfortunately, um, that, 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 that's not going to have um, uh, any effect for now. So okay. there we go, no inflation. Uh, in the afternoon in the US, we got core retail sales. Uh, retail sales. Um, you, you can click on the graph on the far right, Adrian, just to see how that's been going. Um, you're just because we're not getting big expectations of an increase in retail sales, it doesn't mean all that's happening now is that things are normalizing. So we've sort of counteracted or recovered the the, the big uh, collapse in retail sales at the beginning of the pandemic. And over the last three months, you can see that we've had some uh, pretty good numbers from the US. We're now looking at a more normal situation. But remember, if we don't hit the expectation that the market has of what sort of one percent. Um, uh, on Wednesday for retail sales, then the markets will react neg negatively. You'll see the dollar fall and yeah. you'll see the stocks fall, possibly. Um, FOMC, that's always the, a big one, isn't it? Okay, well, we talked about the central banks. This is um, the um, uh, first um, big one uh, of the week, uh, the three that we discussed at the beginning of this. Um, any signs of uh, further help for the US economy, uh, uh, that's what we need to look for. Uh, the FOMC, by the way, that stands for Federal Open Market Committee. It's like our MPC, but it's uh, for the US Central Bank, uh, the Federal Reserve. Um, and I think maybe the stock market over the last couple of weeks, do you think that will cause the Fed to think again about um, what's going on? I, I, I don't expect too much myself. Uh, and one of the reasons why I don't, Adrian, is I think, well, how we've, how long have we got to go to the US election? Six, seven weeks, is it? Yeah, Something it's not like long. That? Seven weeks. Yeah. And I think, you know, with seven weeks to go to a presidential election, anything too unexpected, and the market is not expecting too much, um, another um, uh, federal package has still got to be put through. But that's not something that the central bank is uh, going to be dealing with. Uh, but I think if they do anything, really uh, unexpected. I think it will be deemed to be somewhat political, if you know what I mean. And, and I have to say, knowing the relationship between Donald Trump and uh, Jay Powell, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, it is really difficult to imagine the Fed coming to the rescue of Donald Trump's uh, presidential campaign, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I should say so. Um, yeah. As ever, these, it tends to be more about what they say and, and so on. So we, eyes will be very closely on the statements and I guess the press conference um, at 7.30, Jerry. Yeah, it, it's more normally the press conference, Adrian. The, the statement is normally quite bland, um, especially when you're not expecting anything. But the press conference can be a lively thing. So half seven in the evening, uh, when a lot of people obviously have finished trading European markets. But, you know, it does it'll affect the dollar for sure. Uh, and equities. So uh, yeah, that can mm -hmm. be a lively affair at 7.30 for sure. 
Uh, okay, so we've got a couple of bits quickly, uh, Jerry. So uh, Bank of Japan, uh, similarly, that they've got their uh, rate statement uh, on Thursday morning uh, in the in the in the wee hours. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll be uh, should be fast asleep, uh, but we'll wake up to find out the consequences of what they've agreed or said. We're not really looking for anything. I think with the appointment of a new prime minister. Uh, is it going to have implications in the longer run for the Bank of Japan? Probably it's, there is going to be an adjustment in government's uh, policy uh, or um, economic policies, um, but I don't expect anything, um, uh, or, albeit they are um, expected to announce a slightly more positive picture of the Japanese economy, which has done, hasn't done too badly under Shinzo Abe, certainly done a lot better under him than previous um, prime ministers. Mm. Uh, okay, and then midday Thursday, big one for us in the UK, uh, the Monetary Policy Committee um, interest rate statement again, although not really expecting any changes here, are we? Uh, no, we're not. I mean, gosh, what can the Bank of England do now? Um, it, there is a lot more uncertainty now, and that's reflected in the weakening sterling that we've um, discussed as well. Uh, Brexit uh, and stalled negotiations, a rise in the COVID-19 infection rate. Uh, mm. You know, you've now got a tightening of these social interactions. So there's rule of six, which started today. Um, so it's it, it's tough. It, it really is tough. And I think the Brexit, COVID-19 uncertainties, I think, may well end up in an increase in, in, in speculation about a, a further cut in interest rates. And you might say a cut in interest rates, what, from plus 0.1? And of course, we're talking about negative rates. And yeah. it's something that had previously been discussed, I think, was almost sort of uh, ruled out but uh, the bank of england have said that negative rates still remain one of the options for monetary policy so if this does get if it does come up in the press conference and it is discussed uh, and if the markets start to think it is is a stronger possibility sterling will weaken further yeah yeah exactly um okay uh weekly initial claims um so this is a weekly stats of new people claiming uh unemployment benefit um here um so that's uh, looking at eight hundred and twenty five thousand, jerry so this is of course some people may have returned back to work uh hopefully uh, since uh, since the last number but this is the new claims for that particular week uh and then a couple of bits um finally jerry for friday um uk retail sales yeah, well, a bit like the core retail sales in the US, this is just uh, the market normalizing, the, the, the number normalizing now following the gains post the easing of lockdown measures. Um, nothing much to say about it apart from, you know, if it misses, it won't do fa sterling any favors or, or the FTSE. Uh, yeah. And then the final uh, interesting number of the week is something that I, I, you know, I tend to follow a little bit, which is this uh, uh, University of Michigan consumer sentiment number, which gives us a great idea about how the economy, US economy is going to be performing in the uh, near future. So if consumers are happy, they'll go out and spend, they'll go out and borrow, uh, they'll buy houses, they'll have to buy white goods and all that other stuff. If they're not happy, it tends to suggest that you know, things are going to slow down. So um, we like to follow that one quite closely. Yeah, more of a leading indicator. So things That's like right. the, a uh, lot, lot of indications are sort of lagging, you know, what's already happened, whereas this is, tends to have more of an impact on, on a leading basis and how we might might spend for the future. Which, which is what yeah. investors are most interested in. They, they don't like to know what's happened in the past. We want to know what's going to happen in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good. Uh, OK, well, that's about it then. So um, I'll uh, finish off the podcast now. Thanks very much for that, Jerry. Appreciate your uh, guidance as ever. Uh, otherwise, everybody have a wonderful week's trading. If you would like to uh, find out a little bit more uh, about uh, trading and you want to learn one of our strategies, then you are extremely welcome to come along to one of our live trading webinar events. Uh, they're all online. You can log in from any device, uh, phones, uh, tablets, laptops, MacBooks, whatever, and we'll teach you one of our uh, trading strategies and how we can spot uh, turning points, changes in direction, new trends, momentum, all that good stuff uh, for FX indices and commodities. So if you want to learn a new strategy to help you take on this volatility, and then we pick up some great trades. Make sure you come along to our website, bit.ly slash learn TS. That's a short link there. So bit.ly slash learn TS. Get yourself booked in for a free live trading event. And you can learn a whole lot more about how to trade these markets more effectively. But otherwise, everybody have a wonderful week's trading and we'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.